this film is a true horror and sci-fi classic. Fresh off the heels of playing the infamous Snake Plissken, Kurt Russell reteamed with John Carpenter to bring us the dark, atmospheric horror of The Thing. These two really did make for a perfect pairing, especially in the 80s. Escape from New York was Kurt Russell's first real big hitter of a film where he was the main star. Now, only a short one year later and away from the action setting, he showed the world his diversity by putting in an incredible performance as lead survivor RJ McCready. His character is forced to lead in this situation of unimaginable horror. The fear, paranoia and mistrust that grips and consumes all of the research group is what makes the setting and the characters so believable. This thing, this alien creature that can assimilate anything that it touches, by now could be any one of the team. It's understandable that any one of the men couldn't trust the man stood next to him, and it's that right there that makes the film so frightening. Imagine yourself in this situation, knowing that one of your team, one of your friends, is likely to be this alien thing that is mimicking him. How would you go about telling the real one and finding the fake one. It's a very psychological film, pulling at the human mind in ways that only some of the true great horror films are able to do. The film takes place in a desolate American research base situated deep in Antarctica. Winter has just arrived, and it's right then that the music begins to kick in. John Carpenter was always very smart and precise with the eerie tone. When it sounded, for the audience, it was our cue. Either the thing was on screen, or something was about to go wrong. Now, being in the Deep South, there's bound to be plenty of things hidden underneath the ice and snow. And all of this came about after the Norwegians' curiosity got the better of them. This thing had been hidden, frozen under the ice for hundreds, maybe even thousands of years. And after its ship was discovered by the Norwegian research group, they uncovered it, dug it up, and caused the chain of events that led us to here. We saw the aftermath of what that thing did to the other research base, so the second that the US team allowed that dog, unbeknownst to them at the time that that is the thing, into their base, you knew that a similar outcome had to be on the horizon. And it all started to kick off as the thing got caught in the middle of an assimilation. They had already torched the thing once in that dog kennel, but only Blair was properly alert to the fact that the thing's damage could have already been done. And that was ultimately confirmed as Windows caught it in the act again, trying this time to assimilate a human. And as the team caught up to it trying to run off, the shock and horror really began to sink in. Now the CGI may be far behind what is capable now, but it did not stop the special effects from being downright disturbing. Sometimes it almost makes you want to turn away when watching that thing transform. The operation table had to be the worst bit, so if you're someone with an uneasy stomach, just be a bit mindful. Gore, blood and scary special effects are in abundance throughout. And after going through all of the horrors of the film as we witness the deaths of practically the entire research team, the thing reached its finish with one of the most ambiguous endings in movie history. It's still talked about to this very day with the question of who is the thing? My overall verdict for John Carpenter's The Thing is a 9 out of 10. It is a genre-defining classic. Scary, creepy, thought-provoking, all of the things that make a horror movie stick in the memory for a long, long time. The Thing immerses you and thrusts you into the character's world, putting you in their shoes and asking us how we would figure it out. It's intense, it's frightening, as Mac and the rest of the crew members fight to survive and try to figure out who is human and who is one of the things. Kurt Russell as Mac really did bring you into these scary surroundings. All of the cast did. 
Blair had a bit of a meltdown, which is understandable given all the paranoia. Keith David, in one of his first films, didn't trust anyone and would have cut them out without a second thought. Every character just had you questioning if they were really human. The only one that didn't in my eyes was Mac, as he was the one who we were following throughout the whole film. So let's talk about it, the ending. I absolutely love the open-endingness of the thing. And so must other people, as it is still discussed in detail to this very day. So in your perspective, who do you think is the thing, if anyone, and why? I've heard the breath, the Molotov cocktail, and the music theories for signs that Childs is the thing. And in my eyes, all of them are indications of that being exactly right. You can see Mac breathing excessively in the dimly lit and cold surroundings. He's like a fog machine, whereas Childs, you see nothing. Yes, alright, you do see a little bit towards the end, but it doesn't even come close to Max. Plus, the thing is designed to mimic its target, so it could be adapting to what Mac was doing. Also, before we even get to this point, we already know that the music is a cue for the thing's presence. And as the camera pans to the room where we last saw Childs, where he was standing guard, with the door now wide open, the music begins to play. That is an early hint. And then we saw Mac think twice about drinking that bottle. Why? Because last we saw, he was making Molotov cocktails in those very same bottles in preparation for the fight. No human can drink gasoline without spitting it out, so when McCready passed it to Childs, I like to think that he was testing him. The thing would have no clue what a drink would taste like, and wouldn't know better to spit it out or not. And that is why McCready laughs. He has no other reason to. He knows Childs is the thing, as they both sit in the quiet darkness. Again, all of those points are theories, not fact but I like to think of all of the above mentioned as a smart trail of breadcrumbs when put together culminates in Mac being the only human survivor. It's an ending that leaves you wondering, and that is why I love it so much. So what do you guys think of the thing, and what are your theories about the ending of the film? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. And as always, thank you very much for watching. Please leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed the review. And I'll see you on the next one. I know you gentlemen have been through a lot. And when you find the time, I'd rather not spend the rest of this winter tied to this fucking couch!